there's like death here. It's just kind of everywhere. Getting really bad lower abdominal pains uh, all the way through my back, my hips. It feels like I'm being either hit or punched. I don't understand what's happening. Ugh. Nobody can feel physically okay in here. It's impossible. I would think that the living are feeling constant nausea, uh, constantly drained. I don't know how anybody can live in here. Death is here so much that there's actually like a little gateway. So what is this thing? So you know how people talk about like the white light? That's this. Okay. And it came because death constantly was visiting this area. Not good for the living, for sure. Living people would feel vertigo and nausea and things like that. I'm like, I'm so drained right now, I like can barely move. Before I got to town, I asked a local historian to look into Alyssa's property for me. Now, she says that as soon as the original owners set foot on the land, family members started dropping dead. And that terrible luck lasted the entire time they were there. So on the phone, you mentioned that the original owners of my client's property suffered from a lot of death. Yeah. Before we even get to that, uh, who were they and when did they get to the property? Well, Steve, it was David Wiley who moved to the property in 1820, and he brought his bride, Sally. All right, so Nancy, he gets there in 1820. How old is he at this time? He's 21 years old. OK, so he's a young man. Yeah. What does he do for a living? He was mainly a farmer. And Sally, of course, was helping him on the farm, keeping the house, and taking care of the children. There were eight children. OK, so Nancy, let's get to the death and the suffering. What happened? In 1824, they lost their infant son, William. OK. And then in 1825, they narrowly avoided being killed in a house fire. It took down the house and most of their property. All right, so the house is destroyed. Did they ever rebuild? Did they stay on the property? They definitely stayed on the property, and they did rebuild the house. OK. But the misfortunes didn't stop there. In fact, in 1839, their nine-year-old daughter died. She had contracted scarlet fever. Uh. And then a real catastrophe for the family. Just a few years later, David died. He was 43 years old. He had contracted consumption. But trouble wasn't done with him yet. OK. Just a few years later, um, their seven-year-old daughter contracted consumption, too. Uh. And she died. And here's her death record. And then a few months after that, David's father, Eli, also died, also of consumption. And the next one was in 1853. Little James Emerson Wiley died, two years old. He was her grandson. OK. And then in 1867, the daughter-in-law died at age 44. So this family couldn't catch a break. What happens to Sally? In 1874, she would die of, uh, of a heart condition. OK, so if I got this right, Nancy, Sally suffered for 47 years of seven family members dying. Absolutely. And her house burning down to the ground and having to rebuild. Right. So when you said they suffered when they got to my client's property, that's basically an understatement. Yeah. I'm seeing that farmer guy again. He's got curly, dark brown hair. Uh, he's wearing a, an old fashioned hat. I'd put him at 20 to 30 years of age. Any idea when this was? between 1830 and 1860. <laughs> he was married. There's a strong attachment to the land. There was a cemetery that was shown. There's seven graves. One in particular is a dead baby. And then I see this woman, just her hands come out, and she's gathering these baby bones together. And she turns to me, and she has no face. It's all bloody and gore. And then the last thing was fire, big fire. So far, I've got a family living in fear on a property where one of the original owners lost seven family members 
and their home to a fire. But I want to see if there's anything else. As I was searching through old records, I find a brutal homicide that took place in 1900. Turns out the victim was murdered very close to Alyssa's house. So I asked a local journalist to look at this homicide for me, and she says the victim was a guy who waited his whole life for his inheritance, only to get murdered in cold blood before he could collect it. Well, Emily, thanks for helping me out with this case. So this murder that happened in my client's property, what do we know about the victim? The victim was a man named John W. Crowell. OK. There's a picture of him. And uh, he was a coffee and tea salesman. He was 66 years old when he died. All right, now you mentioned on the phone um, this guy had some money and stuff. What, what's he doing selling coffee beans? He thought he was part of the Crowell family over in England, and he, he thought he was the rightful heir to part of a $30 million fortune. John Crowell wasn't quiet about it either. You know, he would tell his customers along his roots, you know, that, that he'd be getting this money soon and. So now when we spoke, you said he got killed before he was able to inherit this money. Yeah, he, he never saw a penny of any inheritance of any type. Uh, what happened was uh, on December 3rd, 1900, he went out to the barn. And while he was out there, his wife in the house heard gunshots ring out. She immediately rushes out. As she's rushing out, she can hear John yelling, mother, mother, mother. He says a few more things. He says, the guy's gone, the guy's gone. They got my pocketbook. She runs into the barn, and she finds John lying there on the straw on the floor of the barn. OK. He'd been shot twice. Do we know where? The stomach and the chest. We have a death record here. OK. Pistol shot wound hemorrhage. All right, so he bled out. OK, so now he's dead. Was anybody charged or arrested? No. So it's still an open homicide? It is, to this day. So this guy's dead. What about this inheritance? Did the family get any of it? No, they never saw a penny of it. It's really questionable if it even existed. So this poor slob man that got killed bragging about a fortune he was never going to get. Yeah. What a shame. That old man who looks like a spider is down here. Do you get anything on him in life? He came from, like, extreme wealth and a line going back uh, probably to England. Sense of entitlement like the world owed him. He's saying that basically he stole and robbed people. He was a very not a good person. He just wanted money, 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 and power. He was very, very attached to his mother. He wants to see his mother. 